Greetings, family, friends, and subscribers, old and new. I'm James. Hello. This is the first time you've ever seen me. And I am back in the knife room, the bedroom, and here to make a video on some of my knife collection, old and new. Um, knife Junkie, if you're watching, this is for you. Um... Uh, great podcast on Thursday, by the way. Other than that, let's get this show on the road. It's getting late. Okay, as you can see, I have added some more weapons to my wall of weapons. Uh, we'll look at some of those here in a bit. There's my normal wall, and there's my kukris, and my buck knives, and the rest of my collection is on that bookshelf, including axes, tomahawks, and so on. So, what do we have first, James? Well, the first knife we have is my Buck Kalinga. Yes, I uh, bought in 1983 for a total of $88. Yeah, I still have the receipt, believe it or not. This is a skinning knife. As you can see, the upswept point half guard, rosewood handle, completely sealed in uh, something clear, and very sharp. This is a great knife. I actually have skinned a few deer and a couple of antelope with this. It's also good for breaking down a carcass and uh, butchering the meat. So, oh, and this one... Let's see, I bought it in 83, so they were still using the 425 high carbon stainless steel. I think that's what they called it back then. But anyways, I still have the presentation case, the leather, simple leather sheath, the paperwork, and the receipt. Pretty cool. It's a good knife. Next... On the hit parade is one that is very rare, and that is the Buck 620 Campmate. And if you think it looks a lot like a 120 General, you're not wrong. The Campmate has a craton handle, uh, same blade as the Buck General, Buck 120 General, and it comes with a nylon sheath with plastic liner. Now, I am not sure, and Buck made these from 86 to 92, and they made the whole 100 series, I believe, uh, with the craton handles. I think it was to offer people who maybe live in cold and wet climates uh, a knife that was maybe easier to use. Um, I don't know why I bought this. I think I bought this in around 88. There is a stamp there which will tell me when it was created, and I believe 88. No, nothing on that side. But yes, the same blade as the Buck General, just with what's called a craton, green craton handle. It's not a bad knife. Um, very rarely have I used it, but I did used to take it camping with me. Uh, 
hard to get it snapped. Now, here is my newest knife. This is called a broken back sax knife. S-A-X or C-A-X or S-E-A-X knife. Now, these were popular. Uh, they first showed up in about middle of the 5th century all the way to the 11th century and during the age of the Vikings, which is about 8th century to 10th century, these were very popular with the Vikings. Now this one is kind of a modern interpretation of a broken back sax. It has a 12 inch blade made out of 5160 high carbon spring steel, rosewood handle, very nicely pinned on, lanyard hole, Very sharp, and I have already used this to split some wood. It worked beautifully because literally of how thick it is. Interestingly enough, during the age of the Vikings, the only people who could wear the sax knife were freed men. Slaves and women could not wear them, not even bondsmen. So... The sheath. This is the sheath. It's very nice. Wood covered with leather. But when I initially got it, it had a, a horizontal carry, or a vertical carry belt loop. And the sea axe knife is supposed to be worn horizontally, blade up. And I got that news from a gentleman in uh, Denmark who does Viking reenacting. Um, other than having to modify the sheath, which I did myself, it works very nicely and it's a great big heavy knife. Very nice for wood processing um, and self-defense if I ever needed it. And, of course, I wanted a small one. And this is from a company called... Well, it starts with an S. I can't remember. It's, they sell inexpensive knives. Uh, again, a broken back sax design. I don't know what the steel is. They just said high carbon. It does take a good edge. It's a little weird to hold because of this. But... Uh, yeah, I'm still working on putting a good edge on it. But other than that, it's not a bad knife. I will have to make a new sheath for it, though. Next, one of my newest swords. And here it is. This is the... Gustav Messer, uh, German design, and it is what was called the farmer's sword or farmer's knife, since Messer is the term for knife. Now these came out at a time when your average German peasant, farmer, whatever, was not allowed to carry a sword. So they were allowed to carry a knife. And so the knife makers guilds in Germany got together and they designed the single-edged messer. Now the knife makers guild, they couldn't make swords and the swords maker guild couldn't make knives. So this was a loophole that... Uh, the German farmers and peasants took advantage of. Now, this is, interestingly enough, this is made in Nepal. Oh, as was my broken back sax. And it is also made out of 5160 high carbon spring steel. Now, what makes this different is not only the nice guard that it has, but this... Yeah, part right here, which is called the Nagel, or nail in German, 
and that just helps protect your hand better. And then you've got nearly a D-ring, you know, full hand protection. Um, 18 inch blade, 6 inch handle, so it's 24 inches overall. It's quite thick because this was not just a weapon of self-defense. This was also a tool. So you could clear a field, uh, inhume supper, you know, chicken, pig, goat, whatever. And it was a very useful blade. They did eventually phase out because the sword kind of went out of fashion and rules were changed so that farmers could carry regular messers. Now, I have another video where I show my cold steel gross messer, which is the big one. This is the sheath. Again, wood over leather. And I've made a baldric so I can wear it on my shoulder. I don't have to wear it on my belt. Don't ask me why I bought it. Probably because my mother's half German and I really love the design. Last sword. My Musashi brand, Wakazashi. That's right. Remember when Cass Han Wee, uh, well, some may, some may not, brought out their tactical katana, Wakazashi, and Tonto? I always wanted the Wakazashi, but they were 5160 high carbon steel and just way out of my price range. This, however, is the Musashi brand, tactical Wakazashi with a 18 and a half inch blade. Now this is 1060 high carbon steel and 1060 is the start of high carbon steel. Um, it has a Haman, which is the line. Take a look. It has the traditional Japanese point. Now the one thing it did not have was the Habiki, which is the, the brass or bronze or what a copper sleeve, so I made my own just because I think it looks better. Uh, eh, some people may not think it looks good, but I do. Other than that, let's see if we can pick up the... Eh, maybe. So, now they say it's differentially tempered and clay tempered also, so um, I haven't done any cutting with it. But I will, eventually. So, let me show you what the Cass Han Wee Tactical Tonto looks like. And this is the Cass Han Wee Tactical Tonto with my shrink fit grip tubing. And there is the proper brass Habiki and 5160 high carbon spring steel. So this was of course the last defense of the samurai or yeah, Japanese warrior, but women could also carry these. Maybe not quite this long, but they could. So put that next to my wakazashi and all I need now is a katana of the tactical sort. And guess what? I bought one off of eBay, so there will be a review. So that's it for me today. Take one last look around. There's my new wall of knives and axes, hatchets. The old original wall with my swords and my spear and knives. Oh, I do have a poleaxe in the corner. And of course, my kukri is my buck knife collection. And then behind me is my uh, other set of knives. So, 
that's it for now. I know the video was, this isn't the best quality, but I'm just, I, you know, I'm doing this for fun. So I don't edit, don't do anything else. So for now, I'm your host, James, and I am signing off. Everybody stay safe. Keep them sharp. Keep your eyes open, your ear to the ground, because it's getting weird out there.